So we got a very, very late start here. Ten minutes late. Um, once again, apologies. Nothing I can control, but, you know, we'll try to do what we can to make sure this doesn't happen in the future. As we jump here into Tomb of the Spider Queen between Dank Team and Tilted Miners. Dank Team on the left, Tilted Miners on the right. Tilted Miners going to go ahead and ban the Maev out quick. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Haven't casted this one in a while. It's kind of been not... Not the highest priority map. Um... I've seen a lot of Dragonshire, a lot of Braxis, oddly enough. But anyway, we are back. Apologies once again for the delay. And we're going to dip into the shot clock as much as we can here because, you know, we're going to start late and then we're going to take our time doing it. Because, you know, I don't have a job to get to tomorrow. Kappa. Salty, salty. PJ Salt in chat. Um, Deep Band being hovered makes a lot of sense on the map. Very strong hero at the moment in the right hands. This is Division A. They're going to switch though to Phoenix, and I can also respect that. Alright, so, we're just going to use up as much of the shot clock as possible, because the goal of this is to make Smiley fall asleep casting. Mission accomplished. Let's show up late, and then let's take forever. There we go. Stukov's going to be the pick. I'm getting just a bit salty, I'm not going to lie. Um... Now, what, are, what is the turnaround pick going to be? You want wave clear on this map, absolutely. Gank potential is always good. Garrosh can be strong, especially into the Stukov. Might have banned out though, so you don't have the you don't have the common buddy. Um Gary's strong though. Diablo's okay. I think Gary would be the best first pick. And you could go Hanzo. Or Gary Malfurion. Also a great uh Great synergy pairing. What do you counter this with? Uh, you don't want a ton of melee into a Malfurion. Probably gonna have to deny Tracer. Whether or not you take it, I don't think you do with the Stukov. Just because Tracer is at her best, we she can just dive the backline aggressively, and Stukov's an AoE healer, so it doesn't work very well. Doable. Look at maybe grabbing your tank here if you want the Diablo. You definitely want to get him now. ETC is never a bad pick into the garage. Uh, you can dismount him with that loudspeakers. It's going to be a pretty good choice. It's going to be Hanzo. Give me Joanna. So there's the Hanzo. Joanna makes sense. Uh, Iron Skin going to be useful as well for dealing with the Garrosh. She does bring Wave Clear as well, which is important on the map. Still looking at Ben and Diablo, despite the Joanna pickup. Which I would be surprised by. Um, I mean, Hanzo can kind of be the solo backliner. If you got if you went something like Rag Diablo, I could see it. But, I don't know. Suggests that they might be wanting to go into that Tracer, but I don't expect Tracer to make it past his wave. Now, hovering the Bedeev band. Bedeev would make a lot of sense, because Joanna struggles to engage. Bedeev would supplement that trouble.
We're going to use up every precious second. It's going to be the Medivh man. So it's a Sonya ban, getting rid of that strong solo laner. Two more picks coming down the line. Need to get some wave clear. Could be a gold dan. going to be Greymane and Blaze. There's their wave clear with the Blaze. Greymane also good wave clear, good follow up. Could go a lot of directions with the last pick. Could be a Chromie. But, now what do you respond with? You need a solo laner of your own. Leoric can be okay in the blaze, but blaze can counter it by just E-charging away every time, uh... Every time, um... The, uh, spooky ghost tan comes out. It's gonna be Malthael. Malthael Li Ming. So, solo frontline Joanna. They're gonna have a hard time engaging. Uh, they're, they're gonna have a really hard time engaging here. On the side of Tilted Biters. You can push in okay. It's going to be tough for them to engage. Meanwhile, on the other side, now need some type of damage, I assume. Wait, what's up? Uh, Phoenix is out. Maev's out. Medivh's out. Goldan. Okay. Great wave clear. Great AoE damage. It's going to go that route. I like it. I like that pick. So here we go. Switch phase in action. Alright, no illegal mounts, no whammies. Let's do this. Ew. Bank team. And Tilted Miners. Dang Team currently sitting at 0-1 and 2. They had an unfortunate forfeit last week. Only had four members of their team available. Um, but then Tilted Miners currently sitting at one win and two losses. Just got their first win against Archetype uh, this week. Had two draws before that. So you know, Tilted Miners should be a bit favored in this game, but it'll be interesting. Um... As we jump here into this match. Let me count the Haas. So it looks like it's five Haas. So I'll have to keep that in mind as we introduce the teams. Uh, all right. It's, it's a very... Like this comp on the right almost seems Gale Force-esque. I can see Gale Force running this comp. Maybe replace Leaming with Jane. I could definitely see Gale Force running it. Sorry, that's on the right. On the left, it's more of a isolate someone and blow them up. 
And they have a lot of isolation tools, including Gold Dance Horrify. We'll have to see where this goes as we jump into the match. Game number one between Dank Team and Tilted Miners. You should GG, you're gonna be on Gold Dan, Asian Gamer, gonna be on the Garrosh. Mac Attack gonna be on Hyperion, Hyperion's gonna be on Blaze. And ha 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 ha. It's gonna be on Greyman. And over here on the right, we have Eiko, gonna be on Hanzo. I just Fizz, gonna be on Joanna. Cadius gonna be on Malphael. Fal Phalarynx. I go Phalarynx gonna be on Li Ming. And Ruckdol gonna be on the Stukov. Pretty standard talents out of the gate here. Nothing, uh. Nothing unusual. Pardon me for the yawning, but we did start 20 minutes late. So, gonna move into this though. Both teams kind of poking each other back and forth. Gold Dan only with one stack so far. Li Ming actually trading out damage. And that's... That triple damage, you know, can do very well in the early game. As Mathael's already in the bot lane soaking here against Dank Team. Stukov doing a good job sustaining people out. Hanzo go with that Q build. We're going to have to keep an eye on that one. At some point, we'll need to pop down and get a couple uh, shots against the... Excuse me, the Blaze there. But already doing pretty well to kind of harass Asian Gamer, keeping him dismounted. Aiko playing very aggressive here, and I and I like this a lot. This, this set shows a lot of skill, but a lot of... Uh, ooh, there's a good brood. I was about to say, a lot of confidence. Um, that was a very good brute there by Malfurion. Perfect, uh, perfect sweet spot. But Malfael pushing it Hyperius early down here. Asian Gamer taking a lot of damage now from this Hanzo. Man, if he had redemption, he'd, he'd be done already. Uh, he's just playing so well with this uh, just aggressive... Like, look at that. He, he's chasing a Garrosh over the wall <laughs> and trying to get the finish with style. Well done. Well done. You should GG rotating down. It's a corruption stack up to six. Gonna keep an eye on that talent. Katie uh, equalized a bit with Hyperion at the moment. Well, three by both teams. Gem count actually favoring Dank team at the moment. Although, both teams doing a good job picking up their gems. Red just missed... Nope, they, they picked it up. Red is going to miss a gem or two there, though. Oh, just a gem. Both teams just rotating. Now Garage able to step up a bit. With the Goldan here to follow up. We are seeing a flank here from I just fizzled. Big condemn potential. Good silence. Forced IJ Fizz to back I just fizzed. Excuse me, back up. Ooh, Phalarynx all over Asian Gamer with that burst damage. That's where Lee Ming gets you. Level fours coming in. Nothing too surprising. Joanna going with that engage, so she absolutely has to go. I mean, they have no engage, otherwise, and Malfurion gets taken out by Li Ming with a huge, huge orb. Goodness gracious. Li Ming still going dominant, so could be looking at that Calamity build. Always a popular choice when you have that Joanna. You can follow up real nice off them condemns. Tasty, tasty. But that's going to be enough gems lost here. On the side of Dank Team, but they're not going to be able to get a cap. Sugov silence. Sugov in a bad spot. Rectil's done. He's he's done. Absolutely done. Great flip there by Asian Gamer. Now Li Ming could be in trouble. Has to blink away. Does manage to do so. Malfeo currently on camp. Bottom soak. No one picking it up here for red at the moment. Dank Team. You know, they, they managed to get some pressure here. The question is, are they going to be able to deny a turn? And 17 going in here, that won't leave four needed to be turned in. Who's carrying four? No one's carrying four yet. Okay, now Malphi is carrying four. Li Ming only has two. Ooh, Li Ming is about to not have two gems. She's about to have exactly zero gems. She's not getting it. Yeah, she didn't get it now. Good patience there by HaHa. -ha. Hang on. HaHa, HaHa, HaHa. Uh, going for the cocktail at the right time. 
Waiting for Li Ming to blink. Didn't jump, didn't dark flight into the wall. Smart play. And, uh... But, despite those picks, it is going to be dank team. In fact, still defending. And, uh, Hyperius, unable to turn those 23 gems in. He's carrying quite a bit and in the solo lane, so... Needs to be a bit careful. Level 7s uh, for both teams being picked up. We do have, of course, Into the Fray by Garrosh. Always a fun one. Ooh, the huge silence. Oh, secures the kill onto Greymane with Hanzo. And there, I mean, this Li Ming Hanzo combo, it's doing a ton of poke pressure. And when you have this much poke, it's hard for Malfurion to get value. You know, Joanna's really the only one he can consistently moonfire. And uh, right now, it's just paying off very well. Gilded Miner's up a level. Still have a Web Weaver up in the top. A lot of low health people coming in. Gotta be careful. Here comes Phalanx. Looking, looking hungry. Asian Gamer. Gonna get silenced out. Take a Li Ming poke. Very low health. 37 gems onto Asian Gamer. Oh, Hyperius has 24. Ooh, he could go down. This is, this will be a devastating loss. They're gonna lose these gems. That's 24 gems dropped. And they're not going to get picked up. That is devastating. When you can pick the solo laner off on this map, it definitely play, pays dividends. And now, I mean, look at this. Tilted Miner's just stepping up. Not afraid. They have their 10s. They're going to take this camp. Look at the talents. It's disintegrate over the wave. Usually when you go that more burst-oriented combo, you kind of see the, the wave of force. Ooh, here comes Gul'dan now getting thrown away by Asian Gamer and now trying to run away himself. Big silence running the turnaround. Needs to be careful because Last Rites is up. Aiko just going to taunt a little bit and get over the wall, but, you know, this has been just a fantastic series of events here. On the side of Tilted Miners, they've uh, they've denied turn-in by just pressuring and not letting anyone do anything. They've gotten a couple good kills. Worked out well. They denied 24 gems off of the blaze. So, Tilted Miners in a strong position. Level 10 still half a level away. It's going to be very, very difficult to find a turn-in. Lafayette going to grab the siege camps here in the bottom. Top being cleared up. Could look for the turn in. But they're gonna they'll get it denied, most likely. Oh no, here comes the turn in. Are they gonna get it? Radar over the wall. Flashlight. Bless shield. Oh my goodness. Greymane just disappeared. Garrosh getting finished off by Leeming as well. Valorinx using that reset very well, getting the double kill. Now Iberia's feeling you need to rotate top. But once again, denying the turn-in. And now they have enough gems to just turn in themselves. And they're going to get it. Tilted Miners. Huge lead in this one so far. Already with two forts down. Top fort is going to drop here. And they're about to get web weavers. With the lanes pushed in. This is uh, not good for Dank Team. No siree. Not good for Dank Team. Bethel's still in the bot lane, but top lane is pushed up. Looks like that's going to be the focus here for Tilted Miners. They could go for the flank, though. Yushu GG is actually a little bit low, and I don't think they're aware of this flank potential. Here comes the flank here from Joanna. Condemn into the silence. Bless shield. Trying to see the kill onto ha 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 ha. I think I, I did six haws. I did too many haws. But top lane has a web weaver there. Keeping the attention mid are the members of Tilted Miners. Pushing now down to bottom. Pop, about to lose a cannon tower. Oh, and the root combo hits, and down goes Mafurian. Ha 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 ha. Is in a lot of trouble. Ooh, that Stormbow over the wall almost claiming his life. Manages to get away. Good root combo there by Rucktail. Condemn going in for ha 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 ha. 
Below 100 health. Auto attack could have killed him, but no one there. Taunt from Asian Gamer. But Asian Gamer taking so much poke from this Hanzo. Ooh, Stormbow puts him below 100 health. And now, I mean, it's a four level lead here for Tilted Miners. This map can snowball really hard. And uh, that's that's what it's doing at the moment. It is snowballing. Looking at the ultimates, I haven't had a chance yet. Horrify, Challenger's War Cry, Bunker, uh, Cursed Bullet, and Tranquility. Gonna be the picks. Tranquility's been seeing a comeback, going for that armor. Um, now, they're gonna maybe check boss. It is Bruiser that's picked up. They'll see no one's on boss and back off it. They only need to get five gems in. So three P actually four people, any one of the four could turn in to start a web weaver phase. This one gonna get interrupted. There's the curse bullet though. Turn around with the blaze. Horrify on the Joanna, but a huge root silence. Oh my goodness. Rucktel just went poo poo. On the members of Dank Team. Rucktel just hit, I believe that was a three man root combo. Um, that or it was, yeah, I think that was just the three man root combo. And uh, Rucktel literally just pooped on them. Like, that was just un unpleasant to, to witness if you're a Dank Team fan. But there's there's the power Stuke off if you, if you need, if you need confirmation about why that level 13 talent has gotten so popular. Well, there you go. Um, gonna push up here with boss. Still no turn in yet, so there's not even gonna be web weavers to defend. Garrosh and Blaze currently in bot lane, so not even close to this. So this boss gonna move up pretty uncontested on to the keep. Cursed bullet down. Keep slowly being worked. Garrosh stepping up, but just takes a ton of damage. Now a Last Rites could come in. Last Rites does claim Garrosh's life. Cold Anga is down as well. Tilted Miners just running away with this one. Ha 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 ha. Who's laughing now? Goes down. Hyperia's going to get away with those 38 gems, but what an absolute dominant showing by Tilted Miners. Four levels. They went off two turn-ins and a boss. Never let a turn-in come through for Tank Team. And they just played absolutely fantastic. Great job by Tilted Miners. Well-earned victory today in game number one. We'll set up for game number two on Volskaya. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. This is the last game of the night, folks. Dank Team Tilted Miners Game 2. Forgot to increment the score for Tilted Miners. I do believe they won the last game. Uh, dominant fashion. We'll see what will happen here. Um, Dank Team just kind of let that game get away from them. They really struggled with just all the poke. Uh, when you have that Garrosh, when you have that Malfurion, you're really committing to being able to get into the t enemy team's face. And they were, they were able to do it a couple times with some early pickoffs. But I just, in any type of 5v5 situation, they had no way to step up to engage. Be interesting. That was uh, interesting. Normally, Tilted Miners, like, if they if I see that kind of comp in Hero League, like, I'm like, what did we draft? <laughs> um, but it worked. I mean, they just had so much poke. And... It just it, it came down to the, the, the two people on the Hanzo and Li Ming were so accurate with their skill shots that it just decimated everything Dank Team hoped to do there. Might want to maybe change focus, maybe look at a Stukov this time if you're going to have to worry about that kind of poke attack, especially on this map, rather than the Malfurion. Covering the Diablo ban, not wanting to deal with that. Diablo can be very valuable on this map. A lot of walls. A lot of walls. No one likes walls. Walls suck. All they do is keep ceilings up. Ceilings should learn to levitate. I'm tired, folks. I'm tired. I'm talking gibberish. Oh, let me check if any, uh, just so I know after the game, because I'm going to, like, go to bed right after this game. So there won't be a post-game interview. I'm just going to warn you in advance, because I'm just, it's, it, we started late, and I do have work in the morning. So, let's see, who, nope, this is the nightcap. This is the last game of the weekend for Nexus Gaming Series. So, that'll be it. Looking at next week, though, I've already scheduled some games as we look at draft. My F going to be banned here. Um, so... Tomorrow night, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have Duraton's Couch versus Something Heroic, and then the nightcap, the Bush versus Position1.gg. Not going to cast again until Wednesday. Taking, I always take Tuesdays off uh, to go do faculty stuff, but hopefully planning to cast about 9 o'clock each night. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Currently keeping the weekend open. We'll see what happens with that. Stugov going to be grabbed. by the side of Dank Team, and I like that pick. But now the question is, do they, do you have to deal with a Karosh Kar Malfuria now? Does that, in fact, become the turnaround? We'll see. Take their time with it. Wanting to make sure they get the right picks in. It's going to be Thrall Malfurion. So grabbing the Thrall can be strong on this map. And it does give a lot of poke potential. Uh, Crash Lightning is, is free to stack here during the objective. Crash Lightning is a free stack indeed. So what do you turn around with now? You have to deal with the poke, but you can choke tank. Like, you could grab, yeah, Garrosh. And then... Maybe Hanzo, just to have poke. Now, if you're going into the Sonya, I... Don't love it. Um... I don't hate it. I don't love it. So, I would have liked to have seen Hanzo come out there, because... You just saw the, the problem that Malfurion has with dealing with, with Hanzo's poke. Making sure that you have better poke, longer range poke, I think is incredibly valuable into a Malfurion. And I think Hanzo could have filled that role nicely. Now I would expect, just based on the play we saw on that hero, I would expect uh, Tilted Miners to want to get their hands on Hanzo here. Or possibly Tracer, but... Tracer's a bit risky into the Garrosh. You have to give him a very wide berth because of the uh, Warlord's Challenge at level 10. What do you ban? Medivh? 
Medivh would make sense as a ban. It's gonna be the Hanzo. So they don't want the Hanzo. Could they go Medivh? This could actually be a good Medivh game for uh, Tilted Miners. They have shown a preference to the Joanna against the Garrosh, and it worked well. But now with the Stukov there, you have to think, okay, is how do, how do you best get on the Stukov? Joanna going to be banned, so trying to kind of choke out tanks. And they actually did have Warrior Choke pretty well, so this is going to probably force out an ETC or an Anubarak, if I had to guess. Into the Sonya ETC can make sense. Muradin's always an option. I haven't seen much of him lately. Probably would guess ETC unless you wanted to go like double warrior and then you could see something like Anubarak, Muradin, or you know, Anubarak, Leoric could actually make a bit of sense. Not to say those would be the picks here. I expect a damage dealer here. With Hanzo banned... What do you go? I mean, they have a lot to proc off Leyline. They have the Sunder, they have the, the Root, they have the Twilight Dream. It's gonna be. Li Ming ETC. Okay. They want their Li Ming, so they want to go back to that poking style. They're gonna use ETC. ETC very strong into the Garrosh because he can dismount Garrosh every time Garrosh tries to step up and look for the flip stun. So kind of the new way you combo with Garrosh is not stun and then flip. It's flip and then stun. And ETC can dismount Garrosh so he can't get that initial flip. And if he does get, if ETC gets grabbed, he just power slides through Garrosh back to safety. It's a good pick. I like it a lot here. And it frees up their last pick to be a lot of different flexible things. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want Thrall to be your soul laner if you're going to go to Crash Lightning, but could just go Echo of the Elements. It's still a very good talent when you finish. Great quest reward. They need a ranged assassin. Maybe two. D this up. Junkrat, that's one. Greymane, that's two. I like it. You got the double displacement with the Garrosh Junkrat, which can be very devastating. You have Greymane to combo off it. You have Sonya for the solo lane. You have Stukov's healing. It's a very, very good comp out of dank team. Do you see another ranged assassin here? Try to just outpoke, or do you see something like an Anubarak that can get onto that back line? You wouldn't have a strong solo laner. Blaze could work. But if Blaze gets flipped, it forces out the bunker, and he could be in a bad position. Especially with the Stukov Silence. Phoenix is up. Um. Actually, yeah, Phoenix is up. What other ranged assassins that are, are kind of meta are up? Give me Leoric. I like it. Give you a strong solo laner. Gives you, you know, if he gets flipped, he just Wraith walks out. You can get the damage reduction onto Junkrat and Greymane late. You can entomb the Stukov, and he's just done. Um, It's a good pick. Both teams, I actually, I think, really played this draft well. This is a uh, strong draft by both teams. Li Ming seems to just be a comfort rather than uh, the Phoenix, which I'm okay with. I mean, the skill shot accuracy from Li Ming was insane. I think they got the best tank for the situation, which was the ETC. I think Dank Team learned a lot in that draft. They they banned out tendencies a lot better. Uh, so they took the Diablo out. Just He's a very strong tank, but they also took the Joe on out. They got their Stuk off early so they could deal with the poke from the Li Ming. Which I, I guess they assumed was coming. It's a good draft. By both teams. My one concern is you picked kind of like three. A Stukov, you could argue four, but he shouldn't be stepping up too much. Uh, melee assassin or melee heroes into Malfurion on Volskaya. So we can get a lot of value with that. 
especially when his team can sit back and poke and then eventually going for the kill shot. But I'm going to jump in to Volskaya Foundry. Dank team versus Tilted Miners. Ha 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 is going to be playing the Garrosh. It's going to be Yusha GG on Grey Man Hyperius. Going to be on Junkrat Megatech. Going to be on the Stukov and Asian Gamer. On the Sonya. And over here on the right, Rucktail. Going to be on that Malfurion. I just fizzled on ATC. Aiko going to be on the Thrall. Valorinx going to be on Leeming once again. And down here at the bottom, Cadis going to be on that Leor. Going straight to the bottom lane. Not wanting to deal with the mid fight. I'm kind of surprised by that. Just, you know, not to say you want to fight mid because you don't into this Garrosh comp. But I'm just kind of surprised to see Leor. You know, you can rotate down pretty quick. So just making sure that you can peel the team out. But Sonya going to head bottom. Cadis stepping up. Meanwhile, ETC doing a good job, just making sure not to take too much damage here. We do have, in fact, the Crash Lightning. There's the flip on the ETC, power slide away. Yep, just that easy. As easy as it gets. We've been going power hungry here. Consume Vitality, so there's the Skeletal Heel Swing. Celestial Alignment, that talent I haven't seen a lot. I'm really surprised by that. Just because into this Garrosh, into Greymane as well, that movement speed can just be so good, but... They're all getting the stacks. That's three stacks already of that Crash Lightning. That will start to hurt. Cadis and Sonya trading here. Asian Gamer winning that trade. I'm gonna force Cadis to back early tap here. Eco building up those stacks quick. Already up to four. There's five. And avoids the Garrosh stun. Even better. So great four man rotation here. On the side of Tilted Miners. They're playing it well. Good face melt there on the Garrosh. Now, ha ha ha, hang on, ha 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 was on Grey Main last game. So moving into kind of the tank roll with that Garrosh, I believe. At least I think he was. I had Garrosh last game, I thought. I, I can't. I thought he was on Grey Main, but maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe it was you should GG on it. I don't know. I'm tired. Uh, Root there. On to Garrosh. Junkrat Mine. Gonna prevent too much of engagement. Ha ha ha. Once again going for the flip. Misses ETC though. Gets a minion instead. Cadis once again trading with Asian Gamer. Gonna have to Wraith walk on out of there. Very low though. Asian Gamer had Spear up. That was a deadly orc. And you know, while that's not the worst thing in the world, you do lose Soak Bottom when Leoric is dead. He can't Soak dead. Can't do it. They're all already up to seven stacks, though. A quarter of the way done with this quest. That is... And that... We haven't even hit the phase yet. I mean, once we hit the phase, like, every Q, 100% guaranteed. They're all got a little bit unlucky there. Actually had a good placement on the Q, but... Just bounced to minions. Once again, not... Not lucky, man. That minion stealing the second stack... Feels bad. Okay, just now gonna get some relief... Just fizzed, going to hold the point for the time being. Here we go. Phase starting up here. Thrall does have that Crash Lightning, so you're going to want to stack it. Getting in here nice and early. There's stack number eight. Definitely want to keep an eye on that talent, because it's just a, it will start chunking here soon. They do grab the support camp down here. Is the target we drop flip onto Leoric? Not, never the best target. Not a bad target though. Actually, Leoric already a bit low. Good silence here by Mac Attack. Still, the support camp has not been dropped. Point still contested. Asian gamer getting some good poke there. Ha ha ha. Good junk rat mine separating out the members. Cadis looks like he could go down here. There's a root, but the power slide onto Asian gamer. A lot of trouble, and Asian gamer not going to be able to get back to that health beacon. Health Beacon was dropped way in the back. Now, though, there's the separation on the Malfurion. Rucktail in a lot of trouble. There's the damage coming out. You should GG coming in for the kill. I just fizzled. Now in a bit of trouble. Use the face melt. There's the turnaround damage from Lee Main getting the reset off the Grey Main. And, you know, Grey Main did a good job getting that Malfurion kill, but Phalaryx's Lee Main play has just been really fantastic. Uh, let's take a look at the damage numbers real quick. Yeah, Thrall doing a lot of damage, but Li Ming keeping pace. Thrall halfway done here at four and a half minutes into the game. Halfway done with this quest. Going to get a little bit more done here in a second. Wraithwalk 
Not gonna save Cadus. Cadus, forty. <laughs> Please, okay. I was gonna say no, no. Come on. Stun there, trying to get onto Malfurion. Malfurion dropping the roots, still gets thrown. There goes Greymane diving onto Rucktail. Rucktail doesn't have the sprint, but ETC gonna peel it out. Thrall just poking out, as is Lee Ming, a huge orb collects Mac Attack and uh, Hyperius. Very low. Now Sonya, Whirlwinding, is rooted. ETC, though, gonna go down, but Garrosh going to allow the turnaround damage onto Sonya. Mac Attack now in a bad spot. Needs to be careful. Yusha GG, gonna Dark Flight on out of there. Is Thrall going to be able to get any more stacks? Thrall is at 20 stacks. Oh my goodness. It's five minutes into the game. And Crash Lightning is 20 stacks. Well. Pretty standard builds. Quick silver bullets. Greymane just trying to play more of that ranged assassin role. Nothing too surprising here. Obviously the root makes a ton of sense into the Thrall. Into the Leoric. 59% to 30. Thrall, 21 stacks. Just continuing to work it. Now, ETC going to get on the point as well. Hyperius already a bit low, but there's a big silence there. On to Leora. Going to force him to race strike away. Greymane diving. ETC going to peel it out. Turnaround kill, though, on to Junkrat. ETC getting flipped into the team, but he lands on Taka Stukov, who just immediately gets deleted. Kind of unfortunate there. Now Asian Gamer is going to fall. Dank team now with their backs to the wall. Three kills there. And this is going to be the Orc Thrall. And you can see Thrall hop out to just build stacks as, as possible. Some minions lost here in mid, but they're going to be able to get cannons pretty easy. In fact, it looks like they're going to go for the well as well. Uh, get it? Because as well as for... Anyway. Oh, that was stupid. Protector moving up to top. Gonna combo up this tower. It's gonna drop pretty quick. Mini wave's still not walked up yet, though. Need to be a bit careful. Size are on ETC with the junk wrap, but you know. 20 seconds left. Not gonna get a ton of value with the protector unless you step in. Going in though for that damage. Not gonna get the well. Thrall though, getting another stack. 26. Four more to go, and then Crash Lightning is done. Oh, man. Sonia, meanwhile, trying to equalize pressure here on the bottom. Needs to be careful of the ETC stage dive. Gonna be fine for now. Possible invade here. There's the root. Gonna build the stack? No, no stack. 27, though. ETC gonna finish Prog Rock up before the, uh, before the next phase. Could just crash, could just uh, lightning the fort at the moment and get the stacks there. Gonna move into Asian Gamer though. No one there. Asian Gamer does manage to grab the turret. Invasion called off. Thrall though, positioning up, wanting to get that quest done. Massive shove gonna be the choice. Out of Stukov, Cursed Bullet, Wrath of Zerger, Riptire, and a challenge, or Warlord Challenge, excuse me gonna be the stage dive instead of mosh i like that when you hit stook off it's just very very difficult to land a mosh gonna see the sundering gonna see disintegrate in tomb and twilight dream and uh that is gonna be a deadly auric a lot of resources committed to that etc still still on the top but it will enable them to walk up and take this although crash lightning very nearly done there's a root onto garrosh and one more to go, and Crash Lightning is done. And already, it's just so much damage. I mean, Thrall is doing 40k damage. The high, He's doing more than double the highest damage dealer on Dank Team. And now Crash Lightning is done. And so now it's going to prioritize heroes. I mean, this is... This is scary. And Li Ming chugging out the damage as well. Thrall going to look for the flank. There's the Sunder. Stage dive in Tomb. Doesn't collect anyone. Gets dropped. Stukov going to go down here, I would imagine. No, Stu. Oh, no. Stukov gets taken down. ETC goes down as well. Here comes the Rip Tire. Aiko rather low. Let's take a look at that damage. It's going to be a 43k. Not doubling up Junkrat anymore, but... Still this siege camp, pushing top. 
starting to get some value here onto the keep wall and keep in mind like it outranges keep wall that's kind of the design of this and so you know you have to deal with it you have to respond to it this top lane is very valuable for that here comes a response though so it's gonna get cleaned up but thrall is just absolutely gonna chunk damage in this fight this is this is difficult how do you even approach a crash lightning thrall this early in the game uh, Stugoff doesn't have, like, Pox Populi to give him a little bit more healing. Or maybe the Super Strain. And they're all just continuing to just rack up the damage. I mean, Stugoff can handle it. Mostly. I almost would have gone targeted Excision into this, just to try to get that extra healing, though. Because, like, you kind of need it, almost. It's just so much value if you can get it. ETC, gonna abuse Global in the bottom. Support Camp, potentially getting grabbed. Maybe looking for someone to rotate lazily here. Ahaha, ah, ah, in the bush. Looks for the Malfurion, but doesn't find him. 30%. ETC still pushing bots. They're going to try to step up and force the fight. In a tight space. Got to watch for the stage dive. Here comes the Entomb. Stage dive collects Hyperius in the back. Asian Gamer trying to disengage. There's a big power slide. Forcing Sonya into the root. Sonya self-sustaining for now. Can Stukov get the heal off? There's a big Sunder. Asian Gamer coming back in. Junkrat Tire going to kill ETC. First death of the fight. Kate is going to be the next one to fall. Now it's going to be Phalarynx. And that is three kills here for the side of Dank Team. Massive shove onto Rucktail. Trying to get on. My Eco is very, very low. Aiko going to be the only one to get out of that one alive. That was a very good fight there by Dank Team. Glad to see them uh, show up and, and, and get that big fight. Something that I, I know this team has some good players on it. So it's good that they're able to uh, you know, hang around in this series. Um, I First game definitely did not go their way. There's no way around that. But this game, it's 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 working out. I mean, they're, 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 they're going to have to just... They're just going to have to eat the shit sandwich that is Crash Lightning with finished stacks. Now, ha ha ha, moving it on to Cadis. There's a root. Flip onto Leoric into the back. Stun, but the Wraith Walk was up. You should GG. Trying to trade out. Here comes Li Ming, though. Ha ha ha, and a lot of trouble. Challengers. Warlord's Challenge coming in. There's a good Entomb. That's going to claim Grey Rush. Grey Man going to try to stay on the point. It's going to be 68, but I don't think they're going to be able to reinvade. ETC does have Stage Dive up. Hanging out in mid lane at the moment. I mean, if I think reinvading here would be a mistake, but they will potentially lose keep if they don't. Junkrat trying to poke in. If they can get a big setup, there's all oh, good sundering. Mac attack going to get stage dove. You should GG going down. Hyperius going to be the next to fall. Hyperius, oh my gosh, 12 health. 12 HP. Literally 12. Oh my goodness. And power slide face melt going to secure the kill. Didn't take much. Pushed it over the edge. Ooh, there's a root. Possible turnaround here onto Sonya. Twilight Dream, they want the kill. Guardian going to come mid, get the fort here. My goodness. Well, they had their moment, but Dank Team had the pick off, then tried to go back in regardless. Did not work out for them. Stage dives have been on point. That was a good stage dive there from ETC. Onto the Stuke off in the back line. Separated out Greymane. And then a good chase to secure the Junkrat. Knowing to uh, knowing to save, you know, that you can finish off with just the face melt, one HP, power slide face melt, get the kill. Bottom fort goes down. Pushing up now are the members of Tilted Miners. Level 16s on both sides, but the team had to rotate away to soak 16, so they're still gonna have to rotate down. There's a flip onto ETC. ETC wall is down. There's a big root though. He's able to power slide away as soon as the gate goes down. Garrosh in a bit of trouble. Big silence there. Sonya, though, taking a lot of damage from this Protector. This Protector is down to three seconds, though. This Protector is actually going to break out, and Sonya is very nearby. Slows off the explosion. Good and able to get away, as is that Li Ming damage. My goodness. Take a look at damage numbers. Thrall, already 73 and a half. 43 from Ming. Top damage dealer, Junkrat, only 36.8, so... It's just been there. Take a look at the APM numbers. Greymane doing the best he can. APM extremely high. Um, I don't know why Garrosh's APM is zero at the moment. 
kind of surprised by that. But yeah, um, average APM is a bit higher. Always fun to look at that. I say it's always fun to look at that. I found out about that tonight. Um, so it's not that I know it's always fun. It's just that I found out about it tonight. And I control three is kind of fun for that. Here we go. Is control four anything? Oh, it is minion soak. There we go. Awesome. Anyway, uh, be very quiet. We're hunting gank parties. Ooh, here comes a move on a sport cam. Garrosh gonna flip. Once again, Leork gonna be the target. Are they gonna be able to get it? There's a big power slide. Silence there onto Leork. Rip tire. Gonna come in. Rip tire does find some damage. Leork does go down to Asian Gamer, but Asian Gamer gonna pay for it. There's a flip on the ETC, but oh my goodness, Garrosh is solo. Twilight Dream into the back line. Now there's the power slide onto Stukov. Mac Attack is not getting out of that one. Mac Attack goes down. Also in that brawl, Garrosh goes down, and so does Greymane. And now stage dive onto Hyperius. That's that's a five-man wipe in style. My goodness. Tilted miners. Just getting the kills. Racking them up. And turret down there. Got traded out for the support token. Pushing up into the top. Kate is going to be up soon. Five for one on that team fight you know he, he's selling out for a leor kill and it's just he's not easy to kill i mean he, he, it's just difficult and then like after they killed leoric they were in so deep that they just couldn't disengage at all Ooh, i like this talent choice the burning despair out of leoric I actually really like that talent on this map because of the fighting in tight spaces. But they picked up level 20 before the third protector phase was even up. That is insane. Level 20's here uh, already. Tower of Shah's elements out of Li Ming. There's the crowd pleaser. Astral Communion. And the Wind Fury Blink. Here comes the engage. Here comes the crowd pleaser. All over the back line. Hits three. Massive shove going to come out. Trying to peel it out. Cursed Bullet, there's a flip on the ETC, a little bit out of position. Here comes Mount Furion into the enemy team. Silence, though, gonna secure two kills. Bit of an overplay of their hand. Aiko in the back, gonna find Stukov. Now tries to turn his attention on Hyperius. Hyperius gonna be able to walk away, though. There's a flip. Junkrat Tire coming in. Aiko in a lot of trouble. Yusha GG gonna get Ivan. Get the kill. Here comes Leoric. Ooh, and Tomb onto Yusha GG. Gonna secure the kill. But now a flip. Cadus in a lot of trouble. Does not have the race strike up. He does not have Wraith walk up, excuse me. Now having to try to self-sustain, but Li Ming going to come in and get the trade. <laughs> Phalarynx's Li Ming has just been so fun to watch. Like, Thrall has done work, but let's take a look at kill count. And, oh, only that's only one kill for Li Ming. I'm surprised by that. It's actually been Li Oryx securing a lot of kills. Interesting. But uh, Phalarynx's Li Ming is just very, very accurate. What's my APM like on Malf? I actually don't... I Like I said, I just found out about the ATM APM thing today. Like, I accidentally hit Control 3 and didn't know what it did. Ghost, uh, Ghost, Ghost Leo can't hold the point. Feels bad, man. Can he even do anything? There's a good engage attempt there. Things kind of fell apart, but Thrall... Managed to trade onto the back line, got Junkrat low, killed Stukov basically by himself. Here we go, level 20s now being picked up. So, going with that extra uh, range poke, and with Executioner, you know what, I like it. Um, a lot of potential for damage. Universal Carrier was the pick out of Stukov. Someone explain this to me. One, one good spread in Universal Carrier. I don't understand it at all. I, I'll be completely honest. Um... I, I kind of want to, like, if, if someone can explain to me, like, how Universal Carry fits there, I'm fine with it. I'm just, I'm surprised by it. I've been seeing a lot of Super Strain, but Universal Carrier just doesn't make sense to me there. Anyway, flip once again onto Leoric. There's the focus again. Conveyor Belt conveniently taking the enemy team out of, oh, but Mag Attack is completely alone on backline. Mag Attack going to get absolutely deleted, Sundering 
might actually secure the kill onto Hyperus as well. Not going to be able to go back in, but it's actually Leoric and Malfurion dying on the back line after they get the kill on Leoric. So now things in a bit of a sticky wicket here for Tilted Miner. Oh, Leeming trying to turn the damage around. There's a into the fray, but Wind Fury going to get Aiko up. Aiko kind of cutting back a bit. Could have gotten picked off there. That's going to be... Should be the first Punisher or first protector of the game. On the side of a dank team. I just I here here's why I point this out though. Is like one good spread and universal carrier. I like one of them reduces the cooldown, so it's supposed to go with like kind of higher sustained healing. And then universal carrier it's like you don't really care about the cooldown if you're universal carrying. And it reduces your sustained healing. I I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to nitpick it I just I'm, I'm honestly trying to ask like what what the right pick is there but here now with the Punisher Sonya having a back to defend core does do so before any real damage protector coming in ETC and Malfurion now up and they're just gonna try to get some forts open up some type of win conditions where if they get a big team fight they can go onto this uh Taha Hots this is Nexus gaming series uh Nexus gaming series NexusGamingSeries.com. There's a Discord you can get in. Uh, season 4 is closed because it's underway. But uh, you can check it out there. Um, there are teams looking for subs, I know, right now. There's a big Entomb into the stage dive. Oh, my goodness. And the Twilight Dream, absolutely massive. Thrall now just turning out the damage. Junkrat Tire coming out. Leoric once again going down, but it now with two members alive. If Magnac and Greymane survive, they might be able to save the game at least. We are seeing a rotation into top. Are they going to take the Giants? No, they're just going to push up their Katas here. Now, Katas can get back to life pretty quick. Say This is going to be a 4v2 for a while, though. And they're going to move up. And no one's going to be able to really get on this Catapult. And actually, with the... Crowd please are on the Mac attack if they can get this kill, and they do. Mac attack is done. Arcane Orb gonna secure the kill. Cadus back up. Excuse me, for a second I thought Leoric was on the blue team. It's gonna take out Yusha GG and Tilted Miners. Gonna take the series 2 0 and improve their standings to two wins, two draws, zero losses. Moving them up pretty high in A West, though. That's gonna get them up to eight points. Good position there. With that, uh, unfortunately, not going to be able to do a post game. Um, no post game interview, but I do want to thank everyone for letting me cast tonight. Uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Dank team, they had moments in game two. Um, they definitely had their moments, but just that, you know, they, that one engage where they're trying to just back up and the, the Punisher goes down and Tomb immediately comes out with the stage dive. And as soon as that happens, Twilight Dream comes in, it just lights out. But Dank Team, they, they came back, they were down 17 to 20, won a team fight into 20. Or what rush twenty won the team fight bottom got the protector, made some plays. They had a chance. Um, you know, especially after the first game, it's good to see them come back and and play as well as they did. Tilted miners though, looking really strong in that series. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to watch them. Thrall got stacked on crash lightning so quick. Uh, so really good play there by Eco. But that's it. Thanks again everyone for watching have a great night nexusgamingseries.com check it out nexusgamingseries.com get in the discord uh too late to join for season four as a team but you can always uh you can always check it out um or check out if there are any sub openings sorry i'm tired so i'm starting to blank out so we draw this really really quick Follow me here, twitch.tv slash dbsmiley, twitch.tv slash dbsmiley. I do has emote. going to drop it in chat right now, even though I'm on a two-minute delay, so no one's going to understand why I'm doing it. There it is, the DB Smill champ. Um, but that said, don't subscribe to me. Subscribe to the Nexus Gaming Series.
with that, uh, take care, everyone. Have a great night.